So I finally got Alec to let us have a walk around of his progress that he's making so far. Now in this clip he talks about the hydrostatic system that he's putting together. You have to remember that this entire car is driven hydrostatically. There is the same Volkswagen motor that Rock Dog has, but rather than driving a traditional transmission and drive shaft, it has a hydrostatic pump that it's attached to, and that is in turn attached to hydrostatic motors above either pumpkin, and the entire vehicle is function functioning off hydrostat. Okay, I guess the main thing I've been working on <clears throat> the last couple of weeks has been, or the last week anyway, has been the hydraulics. Um, I'm going to just go around and show off the pieces, I guess. This here's a control body which will control the, the uh, frame extension. They're 10 gallon a minute uh, electric uh, valves, so that will control the front and rear of the of the frame extension on on sliding the rails out. Uh, the car's using a 20 gallon a minute pump, so I'm splitting that uh, 20 gallon a minute flow to run the frame extension and the steering. And I put in a fairly large steering valve that'll handle 10 gallon a minute, so should have plenty of steering. It also is a double pump, so there's another seven and a half gallon which will be running this valve body over here which will control the, the raising and lowering of the frame and the rear steer and it's, it's a five gallon a minute pump so I may have to deal with a little excess flow somewhere uh, to keep from running too much pressures but anyway that will control uh, the up and down on each corner and the rear steer this here's uh, I'm running them. Everything's running through one bypass, so I run check valves on each side of the bypass, and so if I overpressure it, and I'll set that probably at about 2,500 pounds of pressure, should be running that, running a, a 70 gallon a minute return flow, and then the hydrostat itself has its own high pressure filter. Uh, Cooling's two Ford Super Duty. Uh, filters or coolers and I'm gonna I've got that set up over there to where I can divert whatever flow I need to go through them coolers I can go up to up to 30 gallon or 27 gallon a minute through them if need be I just don't know how much I can put through it so I made it adjustable uh, the whole system will hold about you know, 9 gallon 10 gallon of oil so it's going to be doing a lot of circulating this is a hydrostat motor that I'm going to run it. It's a, it's a variable piston motor. It also has, it's a two-speed, so it also has a port for, uh, for shifting the, the ratio in it. So, you uh, know, it should be. It's almost identical to one on my. It's a, basically from a New Holland skid steer. So it'll be a two-speed uh, variable displacement motor, from zero to. 3,900 RPM or 4,000 RPM roughly, so it's got a pretty good range of, and about 100 foot-pounds of, of torque from that startup. Maybe a little more once it's at about 500 RPM. This system, this gauge here, and all of this system, these two valve bodies, and there's another valve uh, down in there, electric valve. All that stuff is just to shift the transmit or that variable speed uh, hydrostatic motor. I wish there was a simpler way to do it, but I needed pressure from both sides, pressure ports, and, and to make it work, that's, that's what it takes to make it go. So all this stuff is just to put 500 pounds of pressure into that motor to uh, uh, shift it from low to high range. This 1.9 uh, TDI VW motor is uh, about ready to hook the fuel up to it. it uh, I'm going to run a manual pump on it. Hopefully that works out. I've never used one before on, on, on my, that other car, so this will be a new experience, but it, uh, it gets rid of the computer anyway. Uh, intercooler up here on the front. I just ordered this thing offline. Uh, kind of looked like it would fit, so <coughs> that's what I'm using for the, for the turbo. 
Uh, I ran a GM starter uh, down in there just because VW starters are so darn expensive. <coughs> and that is, uh, oh, on the other side of the motor. Okay, I am, instead of the VW alternator, I did use the original VW on the other car. They were kind of expensive, so this one I, I switched it over and I'm running a GM one wire uh, GM. And I'm running just an old, well, it's brand new, but it's an old style Sandin uh, V belt drive air compressor because my shifting mechanism on these, on my front and rear end, is going to be air shifted. So I needed a fair amount of air, and it's nice to have air anyway on a rock crawler. So uh, staying with, uh, staying with, with the Sandin's what I used on one of my first cars and I ran it about five years on one used compressor so got pretty good faith in them holding up. Uh, the steering valve up here is uh, the same one that I'm running on Rock Dog. It's two turns from stop to stop uh, which I really like. It's a little quick for highway driving but it's tolerable but on the rocks it's great because you're not cranking four or four turns to turn the car. So I'm going to run a vacuum. The, the motor has a vacuum pump on it, so I'm going to run vacuum brakes on this car. With the hydrostat, I really shouldn't need them that much, but uh, Kay thinks we need brakes for some reason, so <laughs> we're going to put brakes on it. Uh, and that's, uh, that's a look at it for right now. I'm working on the, ver on the, uh, the three speeds for the uh, front and rear end, but I'm not going to go into that because I don't have them ready, and, and uh, so we'll take a look at that in a, uh, when I get those put together a little bit more so they look like something.